Welcome to Make Life Fun. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, founder of Backroads Coaching, where we pave our own path to self-acceptance. Think of me as your self-love bestie, here to guide you, support you as you let go, rewrite the thoughts and beliefs that are blocking you from loving yourself and living your best life. This season, we are talking business, pleasure, love, money, and of course, all things motherhood. This show is sponsored by 35 Ways to Brighten Up Your Day. I created this ebook that you can download instantly at brighteneredays.com to help you have more fun and create more joy by building the habits of taking simple, intentional, empowering action every day, bite-sized inspiration and action steps to brighten your day. It starts with you deciding you're going to be happy and have more fun, and this will lead you to a brighter future. Get it today for yourself or someone special in your life and support the show by going to brighterdays.com. Hello, Soul Family. Welcome back to the Make Life Fun Show. I am so excited to have you here. I actually have my mentor, my coach, the Abundance Activator here for us today, and she's going to be speaking to us about money. So I went ahead and put on green eyeshadow, deeply seated in, let's talk money. (laughs) So Laura, welcome. (laughs) <laughs> We're talking money today on the Make Life Fun Show, and I would love for you to tell the listeners a little bit more about you and how you became the Wealth Activator, the Abundance Activator. Oh, I like the Wealth <laughs> Activator. I'll take that. Thank you for having me. It's lovely to be with you all. Yes, I'm Laura Walton. I am originally from Vancouver, Canada, but I've been living in London, England for over 20 years, which is why I have a weird accent, just to explain that in the beginning. I've got two kids. I've got two teenage daughters. been married to my husband for 20 years, which I'm very proud of. So that's a little bit my domestic life. But I started out as a general healer, channel, spiritual coach after I I came because I wanted to be an actress. I was going to be this actress. I had this vision of my future. And then life had a different plan for me, it turned out. And then it wasn't until I'd been working for about 10 years in just this general healer trying to help everyone trying to give trying to save the world this sense of like real responsibility of the weight of the world on my shoulders but it wasn't really until we had our third child that we were really broke and we call it skint over the in the UK and I just remember collapsing on the floor being like this is crazy I have this purpose I want to help the world but we have no money I felt so trapped so limited so stuck so frustrated I really loved being a mom and but I felt really conflicted between being a mom and and wanting a sense of purpose and fulfillment. I was exhausted. The house was in an endless mess. (laughs) And uh, that was my moment where I was like, oh my God, what is going on with money? And I'd never thought about money, talked about money, cared about money. And until that moment, and that was 12 years ago, and then, then started to begin my personal journey with my relationship with money. And then a few years into that, I started to receive this inner guidance because I get inner guidance when I ask questions that I was here to support heart-centered business owners, entrepreneurs to welcome more money into their life in alignment with their heart, their soul, their body, and the earth. And that was my job to help them with that. And I thought, what? Are you crazy? <laughs> What is this guidance? I was like, what? It, honestly, it was the worst information I've ever heard. I thought that is like the last thing in the world I want to do is talk about money with people and especially publicly. Are you are you kidding? Inner guidance. So that was, I had a little battle with my inner guidance for quite a few years, to be honest with you. But I really started to understand it. I might, uh, to understand why it was important. I had to sift through a mountain of negative thoughts and beliefs and judgments about money I had to work through and find a way of working with money that felt in alignment with my values in a way that felt in integrity with me I had a lot of non-negotiables when it came to working with money slowly but surely I stopped fighting the power and then eventually I launched my first course it's called abundance activation at the time and then I wrote my first book money manifestation mastery and then slowly but surely I started to work with it work with my clients and see this beautiful body of work start mm-hmm. to come out in the world and then start to see it create real life results in the mm-hmm. lives of others and I was like okay I get it I got it now okay this is good this is amazing I'm on board and so it's been a like a slow and painful journey to start really I I say own the throne around the work that I do but really also understand on such a deep level why it's so important as well yes so so powerful and the fact that you are saying this mission this purpose was placed on my heart but I fought it for so long there's so many of us that can relate with that fighting it because 
we don't think we're qualified. We don't think we're good enough. The beliefs start coming at us. And so we'll just go full in. So you talk about the blocks that stop us from creating the abundance and the money that we desire in our lives. And you have 10 of them that you talk about, but can you even talk a little bit about a couple of them that you find that is really stopping people from creating the wealth that they want? Well, there can be a lot of them. (laughs) So I kind of shared recently my top 10. At the core of it, you know, when I first started talking to, particularly I first started drawing in mostly women in the beginning. And when I was sort of interviewing, I I call my market research years where I was just like talking to like hundreds of women about their relationship with money. Like what is going on? What is this? Let's, let's dive in. And at the core, there'll be like surface levels. There'll be all sorts of stories, all sorts of things that come up, which are fascinating. But when you get right down to the bottom of the barrel, which I like to get to where the, one of the core wounds I hear is that I am not enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not deserving enough. Essentially, I'm not enough. It is not enough. There is not enough. And that not enough wound is so insidious and just seeps into absolutely everything and plays out in all sorts of fascinating ways. Mm-hmm. So this, again, we're sort of, if you look at the iceberg and what's above the iceberg, what's below the, the iceberg, the not enough wound is definitely usually in the subconscious and the below the iceberg, at the bottom of the, the surface of the iceberg, if you will. But it really is one of the core blocks. Yeah, like I'm not qualified or like I have so many clients who are just like so overly qualified. I just need to do another course. I just need to do another this or I just need to buy another that, you know. And it's deep and it really is insidious and it plays out in all sorts of ways. So I would say that is like the top one. And I can relate to not feeling enough and definitely it playing out in my life in a big way. So that one is deeply rooted, but there is a way to work through it. And you, like you're talking about, you have to go deep. And so Mm -hmm. I would love for us to talk about how it is at the tip of the iceberg and then underneath the iceberg, how do we go deeper? How do we go there? <laughs> Cause it's not oh, always fun. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here we go. So this is it. This is, and we've talked a bit about there's one of the money blocks that I've been talking quite a lot of my clients recently is the too much, like mm-hmm. I am too much. So a lot of women, again, again, when you start going down to the bottom of the iceberg, fear their power. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what will happen if I have all this money? Right. And it's actually the too much, too powerful. And, and, and in a sense, this is, I, this is the area I love working in because we start to get, we start to get into the underbelly of what's really going because the surface will tell you all sorts of stories that are feel very real and they can be very overwhelming. But what we need to understand is that is to first identify that there are stories and beliefs. And that's the, one of the hardest thing to do because the story you have about money feels like the truth and it feels like reality. And that is probably one of the, the hardest first things to break. Like there is not enough, right? There is not enough money. So I can't X, Y, Z. You know, people say, well, I can't do that because I don't have the money. And I'm always like, that's not the pathway through. Mm -hmm. I know it looks like that. And yes, no one's going to argue with you and your bank account's not going to argue with you. But we have to understand that your surface, that what you're experiencing in your reality is a symptom of something much deeper. And this is the bit we're not taught. And this is the bit that can kind of maybe sound a little bit pie in the sky crazy. But what we have to understand is our current reality is created from our inner reality right so are your current realities based on your your present and past thinking but in order to create something different moving forward we need to start doing something differently now Mm -hmm. and this is where we get into you know what I call the pain portal to prosperity (laughs) this is where we're going to start going deeper now we're going to start going deeper so the first thing that is really important is you need to get clear on what you want and why you want it you need to have a strong desire towards what you want and why you want it because everything in you is going to try and sabotage you moving forward. Everything in you is going to want to collapse against it and fight it. And it can feel horrendously painful to move forward towards what you want. It's much more comfortable to stay where you are. So this is the challenge. And it's honestly, it's all going on in the mind with project 
how you know that inner gang gets projected out everywhere so again it feels you have so much evidence to back up all your points of view right so you need to first get really clear on what you want and why you want and that has got to be stronger than your fears essentially so that's the first thing and I think this is where our, most people just bail like right before we go deeper through the pain port of prosperity like that's where most people just stop so we have to think what I want why I want it and get really clear on that and then so let's say you get really clear on like with my clients with the first like entry level with my work we're looking at at least 10k months right is building consistent take 10k months as a foundation what I'd say like let's just say you decide you want to make consistent 10k months right we decide that we choose it and then we need to look within and go all right what is stopping me or blocking me from creating that and so this you can do with journaling or meditating and then we need to start to look at what is going on inside of me that is stopping me or blocking me from creating it from going for it from focusing on it hello money blocks hello all sorts of money blocks i'm not good enough i don't know how blah de, blah de, blah but what we'll find in there is there'll be the first level which will be the level of the thought. So your your beliefs, the stories, right? Kind of on a mind level. And then if we if we stay courageous to the process and go deeper, we start to maybe feel some feelings, right? If we go even deeper, we're actually looking at the nervous system, like what is running through from the thoughts, from the beliefs, and that what that creates in in your nervous system and how you're feeling in your body. And we start actually on on a level what starts to kick off is our self protection, like the fight, flight, freeze, fawn response. These trauma based responses. Your your body's actually you're having a trauma reaction <laughs> to the money that you want to create. It's extraordinary. So again, I've been in this body of work for a long time now, right? And I'm a deep, deep diver and I'm like a bit obsessed with the subject. So I like to kind of go, what's stopping blocking? What's stopping blocking? Like really trying to get to the bottom of the barrel because I'm all about freedom and I'm all about liberation and I want my clients and I want everyone to get what they want. So I'm like, what's stopping us? What's blocking us? What is it? So we have your thoughts, beliefs, emotions but there's also this nervous system trauma response that's going on the body so why i call it a pain portal to prosperity is we need to understand there's something very deep that's running inside that we would identify as pain that we need to have the courage to face and meet so we can transform it and breathe through it and that i have found there's a very beautiful and simple way to do that but the challenge before we get there is that everything inside of you is going to fight against going through that portal which is just like our self-protection, essentially, because we don't feel safe, essentially, is what it comes down to. Yes. And as you're speaking, what comes up for me is you're taught if you want to manifest, you have to be happy. You have to put your happy face on. You have to be mm. at high vibration all the time. You have to just be happy. And so for very many years, I took on the mantra, make it till you make it for it served me for a very long time until it didn't anymore. But I think a lot of people can relate to that making it till you make it and listening to the manifestation gurus tell us just be happy that is all you have mm. to do so you're saying that we need to feel it all we need to feel the thick of it in order to get what we truly want mm. and so how do we keep our vibration lifted as we're going deep and feeling the muck and feeling mm. the the discomfort that we don't mm. we don't necessarily want to feel and you're 100 correct so once I started allowing myself to feel the pain, magic, I mean, so much magic started to happen for me personally. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nuts, right? And me too, like I started out positive visualization, positive mm -hmm. affirmation, yeah. just say it. And so anything negative or bad, get rid of it. Yeah. Don't think a bad thought because then you'll create a bad thing. And, you know, and, and then I would find myself in the pit of, you know, all, I'm a very emotional person. I'm a very, very deep feeler. And I'd be like, okay, this is bad, bad. These feelings are bad. Yeah. This feeling is good get rid of the bad, just stay in the good. And I work very hard at that. And I, it's funny, like what I've really understood is that everything has a light and a shadow. Like mm -hmm. every aspect of life has a positive and a negative. And we love to think that there's good and then there's bad, but it's much, much more nuanced mm -hmm. than that. What I found is if we like what you resist persists essentially, mm -hmm. right? And I mm -hmm. found that and literally I was guided into this. Trust me, I was like trying to do all the spiritual bypassing of just like, joy, joy, happy, happy angels and love and light and wanting to be love and light. You know, I experienced a lot of trauma and pain. I'm like, I will never, ever project that out. So it's all like positive, 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 positive. But life kept kicking my ass. Right. And I was like, oh, my God, why do I keep being 
pummeled down into the depths of darkness. What is this? And what I found is that in terms of manifest, I, I talk about money manifestation. Basically, it's conscious creation, which is how to create your life on purpose, how to create that wealth requires nuance. It's light and it's shadow, you know, it's light and it's darkness. And the nature, I'm all, nature is always my guide. So I talk about, you know, the beautiful lotus flower that we see that's so beautiful and, and like so divine and absolutely gorgeous is rooted in the sludgy slime yuck that you wouldn't even want to touch, right? At the bottom of the pond. And so this is what I'm always showing. Our roots have to go deep into darkness. Our roots have to go to the sludgy slime, which means staying present with feelings that we judge to be bad. And the issue is the judgment that we judge it to be bad and we judge it to be wrong. So things like grief, anger, sadness, alone, or even pain. It's actually our judgments of it as being bad that create the problem. It's our resistance to the thing that creates the problem. And I learned this when my best friend died suddenly, most horrendous, horrendous feelings. But I, what I noticed when I was grieving her was what was painful was when I was fighting, feeling the grief. And when I would surrender to the grief, do you know, all I felt was greatest and deepest love I'd ever felt. And grieving her was loving her and grieving her was feeling love. And I'm like, what is this thing where the deepest depth of pain carries the greatest love? And I, I really, really got it then. I was like, oh, yeah. Like sadness, the deepest depth of sadness and grief connects us to love, right? For example, when we can hold, hold our greatest fears, it actually activates our joy. Like they're like, it's like, the two sides of the same thing, anger and power, right? Anger, you could judge to be bad, but anger could be the fuel for change and transformation. Like if we release the judgments and work with it really consciously and mindfully, then we can actually use all of it as an activator. So what I've learned is that trying to stay present with the pain, the pain carries information, the, ca the pain carries data, but if we're constantly in pain avoidance, right? And, and deflecting and reflecting and doing so many things to avoid. I mean, oh my goodness, how much energy do we waste trying to avoid pain, overeating, over drinking, all the sabotaging behaviors, the over busy, the overworking, all the crazy stuff. Or if we just stay present and go, Hey, what if there's nothing to protect myself from? And I just could feel, then we start to alchemize it. And then we start to drop in, you know, I know this inside out and upside down, but oh my goodness, in the moment, right? Everything's like, get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> this is the moment where you know the catastrophizing or whatever comes up so I've really learned to you know over like a lot of failure I'll tell you that you know I've been in this game for a long time but really that's it it's like we've got to feel the feels and so I talk about your fortune and your feelings not getting stuck there you know you don't want to get stuck in depression you don't want to get stuck in like overwhelming anxiety you don't want to get stuck in rage but working with it to transform you into in alcohol the situation for me this is mastery level right it is mastery level learning how to hold yourself through this but on the other side of that right it seems to create deeper roots and bring us deeper into ourself and deeper into who we are deeper into connection deeper into intimacy and bridges the gap between our inner world and our outer world and trust me if i could if i'd found a way to avoid this i would have <laughs> and i tried <laughs> But there was no way but through, you know, there was no way but through. There's no way but through. And you talk about embodiment really a lot. And it is something that you're very passionate about, something that I'm passionate about too. And so can you speak to us on how embodiment and be present with our money, how that can start to help us shift our money story? I have oh, a funny story well. that I feel called to share with you. The moment I started being present, because I used to just spin. I swipe the card at the grocery store, whatever. Hopefully it goes through across the fingers. But I was so disconnected from my body. I was not present when I was doing that transaction. And the moment mm -hmm. that I started being present in my body with those transactions, one day I completely forgot my pin. It had never changed. It was the same pin I'd always used to check out, but I couldn't even remember it because I was so focused on being in the present moment, so focused on the price that my body was like freaking out as I was doing this transaction. Uh -huh. And so, yeah, I would love for you to speak on that a little bit more. Yeah. So embodiment, it's, it's, it's a deep one, but essentially 
how I like to work with embodiment is to tap into the amount of money that you want to create. Ask yourself, who am I when the money is here? Who am I when the money is here? Who is that wealthy version of me? This version of me that has money, that creates money, that's comfortable with money, that feels good with money, all the things. And start to feel who that version of you is. And you can maybe see it or get a sense of it. But what part of my money manifestation mastery steps is to start to become that version of you now. So this is an embodiment piece. And it's actually about nervous system regulation is another way to say it. Like if you feel relaxed, if you feel safe, if you feel that you're allowed to be who you truly are, right? That you can be you and you're safe to be you, right? What would that be like in your body? So it's essentially that because I believe that we have so much creative power inside of us, but we're severed from that. We're disconnected from that. Our trauma and our wounds and our beliefs and all that stuff, it creates this huge disconnection between our inner world and our outer world. And I'm a big advocate for bridging that gap. And I'll, I'll tell you why. And just, you know, this is I grew up around a lot of money and I grew up around a lot of wealth and I grew up very wealthy, but I felt like we were poor. And I did not know, it's really embarrassing, but I did not know how sort of privileged I was, honestly, until I had kids. And I was like, oh my goodness, like if I was going to replicate the childhood that I had, I'd have to be a millionaire. Like I was like, whoa, I had no idea because there was so much lack and so much scarcity and so much heavy energy that did not feel good that I like to me that wasn't wealth like that's not for me what wealth is it's like you can be rich but you you can be also poor so my big passion is yes money but integrated wealth wealth that where you also have that joy and happiness and love and connection and intimacy and what brings true fulfillment because money alone we know does not bring true fulfillment and happiness by itself it's a tool and that's a, it's a good one but for me embodiment embodying your wealth is about it's wealth through every cell of your body it's it's wealth through all areas of life and that is some profound stuff that is pretty profound and deep and we start with we start within so that we can create without and yes of course you can go and logically and practically create wealth there's lots of ways to do that but I've seen what happens when people create wealth from that severed place and they're trying to find something outside of themselves that nothing, nothing can really meet that need. If it's not connected inside, we think we project out like money out there or love out there or that person out there. And then I will be. And it's like, no, no, you start inside, you embody it first, you become it first. And understanding it's not about the money. You don't make the money more powerful than yourself. You are the source. You are the powerful thing and yes we need each other we need to kind of co-create with life and start to bridge our physical reality with our inner reality but I've experienced a physical reality that's not bridged with love and that's not something that I I'm interested in thank you and that was my non-negotiable it's like okay what does this look like you know that kind of spiritual wealth and physical wealth heart and soul and body like all of it what does that look like when it's integrated so for me embodiment is that it has to live through your body Right. Or we start a journey, right? Because it's not about being perfect. We start a journey of, of bringing it home. So you start becoming that version of you now and understand that you are already wealthy, right? There's so much wealth that lies within you right now. And it's about tapping that, the tapping that source of creation that lies within you. And that's so powerful is that that source of creation is within us. Like you're saying, we're so much looking for it on the outside world to give us all that we need when truly once we do the work and once we start to really believe it for ourselves, it's right here, right now with us. And so I know for me, once I started feeling it all, when I started feeling it all, what I noticed is my outside world was also feeling it all in a sense of I was projecting the, the wounds outside of myself, right? To like say the thought that's coming in my head is so my husband the moment I started doing this work so my husband then started his own issues started showing up right his own money issues started showing up so when we do the work for ourselves we're not just doing it for ourselves we are doing it for the ripple effect and so I would love for you to speak on that a little bit that ripple effect that we are doing it because the wounds yeah. that we are projecting is not just staying with us it is definitely connected to oh others. my god yes and I, and I would say I can I know this so deeply now because I've seen lots of data and evidence, but when you're in the middle of the start of this journey and you're just little old me and like, who am I? And I have no power. And 
and there's no physical evidence, you're kind of going on faith and trust. But I have literally seen this over and over again for myself, but also my clients. And again, yeah, it's, it's not fun. When you first start feeling and looking, you're like, first, you have to look at the pile of crap that's there, right? You know, it's like if you've been just shoving stuff in your basement or your loft, as we have in the UK, if you're just shoving stuff away, I don't want to look at it, I don't want to look at it. You're going to, and then you decide you want to look at it, you're going to have a lot of crap to sift yeah. through, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, right, you have to be willing to do the spring cleaning and be willing to take the time to go through that and then feel the feels of all the stuff you've been locking away, right? So that's just step one. But what I've found, and I really, it's really important to me that people understand this isn't like about the sort of fast food culture of quick fix. Yes, I have a clients that magically manifest very powerfully, very quickly. It, it is definitely a thing that can happen. But we have to understand that anything that's, I found that anything that's truly valuable takes time, like a relationship or a home or anything that is really, truly valuable. It, it's, it's valuable because we put our time and care and energy into it. So I really want to get away from this, like get rich quick scheme kind of energy. Yes. You're talking about the fast food culture where we want what we want and we want it now. And I have very much that girl for very many years. If I wanted something, I'm going to figure out how to do it. I'm going to make it happen. And I'm going to force push shove to make it happen. But what I'm learning, what you've taught me is sometimes it's not just for today. Sometimes it's for tomorrow and we have to be willing to accept that. And as we're manifesting what we want now that is taking those baby steps that's going to get us to where we want to go and so by following that I'm not going to lie so yes we went through the muck with Austin showing his boobs but me doing the manifestation work he was bringing in more money yeah he got a raise out of the blue for no reason at all and he's like look what uh, I did and I was like oh you're God, welcome never... you're welcome yeah you got double pay <laughs> Well, so that is magical with the ripple effect. I'm so excited. Well, and congratulations <laughs> and well done. And, and again, that wouldn't necessarily be acknowledged from the work that you've done, but I know because the same thing happened in my house. Mm -hmm. So we were super broke. I was bringing in this body of work, channeling and all this kind of money work. My husband had a very low paid job. He did like his job, but it was very low paid. We had two little kids. And then I started doing this work. And then I started wanting to grow a business and, mm -hmm. and do my work. But I was really conflicted because I was at home full time with my girls and I really wanted to parent them and I really wanted to be there for them. And I I wanted to be there after school and I wanted to be the like school trips but I also had this work and I felt so frustrated and I felt very conflicted but my husband was working full-time and I remember what happened was that out of nowhere he basically started his own business it would happen all happened very fast and within two weeks he'd left his job and started his own company and to be honest, this is like totally my shadow. I was like really resentful because I was like, this is my time. Like I want to be running my business. And now you're now not only that, he's going to be working more and I'm going to be left at home with the kids in the house. But I was doing my work. I was doing my money manifestation work. And his business just went from strength to strength to strength. And he started making more and more money. He's now got a seven figure business and it's nuts. But I was at home, not really working. I was doing work, but I was like doing this inner work, watching this happen. And actually at the time I was quite resentful about it because I wanted to be like, I wanted my business, my time. That was a bit of an issue as well. Cause I wasn't, again, I wasn't really valuing myself and I wasn't honoring my needs and I wasn't advocating for myself. And I was feeling like, oh, this is what a mom should do. And I was like, Oh, you know, and so that was a whole, that's a whole other story. But basically, I started to see that, that when I shifted myself, it, it transformed my husband. Well, it's not just his finances and his business. It transformed a relationship. It transformed our sex life. It transformed our home. It transformed everything. Mm -hmm. So what I realized is focusing on money for me, this body of work I call living abundance because it's using money as an activator for actually integrating all areas of life eventually, even though it can take time. And I've seen this with clients as well, like, one of my other clients who was working with me, her partner just watched a few of the videos or was doing like, and literally landed a 30 grand contract and then has gone from strength to strength. And I was kept hearing these incredible results that her partner was having that wasn't 
doing the work mm -hmm. you know it was just kind of you know the literally the ripple effect and I remember seeing this, this is what my inner guidance used to show me is like the, the ripple effect that are when we're shifting within these literally ripples and but I I saw it psychically and I and I got it conceptually but I just didn't know if it was an actual thing and now I can say 100% it's an actual thing it doesn't mean it shifts overnight some things honestly have taken five years you know to shift we don't like we don't like that information if someone had told me it was going to take me five years I'd be like oh my god I want it back I'm in five years but actually now I'd say that was a hundred percent worth it to wait five years to get where I am now that's a hundred percent worth it but at the time I was so frustrated and in so much pain about my current situation that that would have felt way too far away so I've really understood that I'm so impatient I get so frustrated like there's things I'm wanting to manifest now and I'm just like oh my god why does this take so long you know and but some things can happen like very fast but also what I've also realized is faster is not necessarily better and faster is not necessarily kinder because part of the embodiment thing and the other thing I like to say is you have to expand your capacity to hold are you actually able to take care of that thing you're calling in right do you have what it takes to hold it inside of yourself but also practically so sometimes why things take a long time is because we're having to build learn skills and there's a lot of mindset stuff we have to work through and there's certain things we need to learn perhaps to be able to take care of it so I've understood kicking and screaming <laughs> that some things faster is not always better but we have to hold the vision and get super clear and the, the main thing the one thing because I'm so stubborn so I've just never given up on my dreams I just never, ever gave up on it. Not once. And I think that's, you call me crazy, but that is the one difference is I just never gave up because I saw the vision and I knew it was possible. I had no idea how I ever, I never have never known how. And I still, what I, my next level I'm manifesting, I don't know how, but it's like holding it, understanding that if you keep holding that vision and take that next step, next step, next step, it can't not, things can't not change. Yeah. One of the biggest thing I love about the work that you do, it's not just sit and meditate, be in stillness and voila, magic is going to happen, which I've taken those courses before too, that we are going to sit, we're going to meditate and we're going to envision things to life just with thinking about it and sitting still. And so I love that you talk about the action piece that you have to mm. take action from your empowered self, from the person mm. who's already doing the thing. And so, yeah. yeah. So I would love for you to talk on that a little bit. It is. And I'm giggling away because I was that person too. So I was in my bedroom. I was doing the visualization, the affirmations. And actually the, the thing is you can actually manifest from a, a state of being. And it is part of what I teach, right? Like there, there is power in that. But I remember I was manifesting some things, but then I was sitting in my bed like, and I said, why have I manifested that? But why am I not manifesting that, that, that? And they're like, Laura, you have to leave your bedroom. <laughs> like you, you know, you actually have to put one foot in front of the other. This is my inner guidance talking to me now. And I was like, oh, right. Things are just going to fall out of the sky. I actually have to take action. And I said, well, why am I not doing that? And then again, money block, money block, money block, like fear of judgment, fear of rejection, fear of hurt, fear of attack fear of being alone fear of you know all the things actually one of my big money blocks is fear of a persecution actually literally this very irrational but fear I'd be actually killed for being myself in the world very very strong then I was like okay so my practice was you know getting all the inner game right and then tapping into that wealth frequency I like to call it the wealthy version of you the, the part of you that's already created that that money and then asking that part what would you do? So I, I talk about this part of you being the CEO, the coach, your consultant, your best friend, your guide, tapping to that future wealthy version of you and asking them to guide you. What would you do now? And what's amazing about that is this part of you will do things quite differently. They think differently, right? They feel differently. They've moved through all that limiting thoughts and beliefs. And they're often just cutting cutting straight through a lot of BS, to be honest. And they'll be like, do this, right? This is the next step. So I call it aligned action, where you're taking action that's aligned with what you want, where most of us take action aligned with our scarcity thinking, action aligned from that sort of survival part of ourselves. 
very unconscious. And the, the challenge is that everyone's going to agree with you as well, because most people function from that place. It's sort of survival. You do the right thing. We just do what we know how to do. We do what we've been shown as possible. We do what we can see as possible. But to take action from a place that you've never experienced before, right? It can seem very risky and seem kind of crazy and seem like that's very unsafe, right? And yes, I suppose there's an element of risk, but what I've really understood is there's an element of risk just being alive. Yeah. <laughs> like, like you can do the safe and right thing and still experience negative things happening. So that's how I roll. You know, you, you tap into the amount of money you want. You tap into that version of you. You start to embody that version of you now. And then you start to tune in. What is the aligned action that I need to take from that place? And the aligned action needs to happen, you know, on a consistent, regular basis. I'm a huge advocate of the power of our being, right? How we be is hugely powerful, but it's not everything. Just like action isn't everything so a lot of people just action 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 this disconnect from heart and soul i'm like that person needs to slow down a minute <laughs> and connect right it's about balance right we're talking about light and shadow or positive and negative it's the same thing about the being and doing it's about finding more balance between these different states of being and for me this is about being like a whole integrated human <laughs> connected human yes and we're not taught to be connected humans <laughs> We are taught to do, 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 push, 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 make it happen. And so it is very refreshing to know that we can be our whole selves. We can be connected. We can be taking these line actions and it can feel so good. I feel like that's the best part is that it can feel so like you're not even doing anything because you're walking yeah. in a way that feels just like you said, heart and soul aligned. You just feel so good doing the work that you were yeah. called here to do. And I would say that that moment when you're feeling that you've worked hard to get to that place. Yes. And yes, once you drop in, it's like, oh my God, this is me just being me. Mm -hmm. And I'm just relaxed and I'm just being, and I'm just enjoying. And then you're in joy. And then you're like, oh my God, I'm in a high vibration, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> but you've worked to get to that place, right? You've, you've liberated something. You've, you've stayed present with something to be able to transform something very deep inside to be able to have that state of being. So getting into that state of being requires some deep diving and requires a lot of, you know, what I think is real heart work, which is really being with some of the very difficult and painful stuff. And then, well, but I think when we can feel safe and loved and held, and that's the problem, we're not usually safe and safe and loved and held in, in these painful bits. That's why we get, we all just soldier up and armor up and self-medicate and just, Rah! but once we can go, oh my God, I'm safe to feel and I'm safe to be, and it's okay. And it dissolves. And we're like, ah, then it's like, we come to life. It's, yeah. it's, it's like we act, we access our, what I think is our true life force energy. Mm -hmm. and that's when we're like, oh my God, I feel amazing. It's but it's not, work. you know, it it's is worth, worth it. the work. Yes. And it. I would you don't say, even call it work. What do you call it? Well, it's like heart work. I call mm -hmm. it rather than hard work, but it's like being in flow, but you know, there's definitely hard work, but it's like, I think for me, it's about, there's the hard work paradigm where we're like, we just have to work hard. And you know, this is just how it is. And this is your lot. You just make the most of it. Like I, I'm not down with that either, but it doesn't mean that you're not working hard, but you're working towards something, a, a desired outcome, a desired result. That is something fundamentally beautiful and life giving. So I'm willing to work hard for something if I know that I'm working towards something that is really contributing not only to my life, but to the lives of others. I'm willing to do that kind of hard work, but I'm not willing to do this sort of hard work for like, this is just how you do it to survive. You know, that for me is suffocates life. Like I, I can't, I just, I just don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't, want to do that. I don't want to do that. I definitely want to show up truly authentic as myself, joyful and shining the light for others to see. So, and that is what you have inspired me to do, taught me to do. And it started by going to your wealth retreat, which is coming up. Mm. And you were doing it before you met me, may I just remind you as well. And it's just more, it's like, there's, there's this more, right? It's like, if we're these beautiful gems and there's more and more to uncover and discover coming back into wholeness. It's, yeah. it's incredible. 
it's beautiful it's true it, everything leads us to yeah everything leads us to where we need to be if we allow it for sure yeah exactly and yeah so i've got this beautiful wealth retreat coming up would you, do you want me to tell you about it yes please so what i like to do is i like to offer a ton of value and what's really right in the line of my heart right now is is making this work as a, as accessible as possible so i have i run this event it's online which means that people can join from all around the world in the comfort of your own home um, and i run this over five days so it's a five-day retreat where i take you through step by step the steps to becoming a money manifestation master and i walk you through it we spend about an hour a day going through the different steps of different sections so we get really clear on your vision of what you want and why you want it we get really clear on your money blocks and what's stopping or blocking or sabotaging you and i basically i hold a safe space to help you get that clarity we do embody your wealth so we teach you i take you through a process that teaches you shows you how to embody your wealth and what that feels like what that's actually like and and we start a process of rewiring to receive like helping yourself to feel essentially to feel safe to welcome the money that you want that's the fascinating thing we think we want all these things but we actually don't there's something in our body that's saying okay i want it as an idea but your body's like no way don't come near me so we want to re this rewire and to receive is basically i am safe you know and i'm able to let this in so we really help to rewire that and i help you again connect to aligned action what that next best line action step is for you but essentially you're learning my steps to becoming a money manifestation master and i want you to know those tools understand them and start to work with them and play with them and the other thing that i'm very proud of is that this event attracts in absolutely stunningly beautiful people big hearts beautiful souls who are often you know they're business owners entrepreneurs or professionals that want to make a difference to the lives of others while also creating an extraordinary life for themselves and it is the most beautiful authentic people it is literally for me it is heaven on earth being with people like this like yourself included it's like wow this is like i used to feel so alone that was one of my big money blocks that i'm alone you realize that there are people out there in the world who are here to receive you and love you and support you and and celebrate your success so we i we celebrate your wins we celebrate you making big money we celebrate you as an individual and and we also receive you in all your vulnerability and your challenges because every single human being no matter what level you are in of success or wealth struggle everyone is challenged everyone's struggling every single human being and it you know anyone who tells you otherwise is lying like it's just part of being a human being there's different levels of struggle there's different levels of pain right there's different levels of privilege but fundamentally human beings struggle and so part of this thing is just like let's just cut through the bs and realize that you don't have to be perfect. I had like one of my money blocks as well was like this, I call it my recovering perfectionist. It's like, we all struggle. We don't have to hide that. So what I love about this space is not only are you doing this powerful money manifestation work, but you're also networking, connecting with beautiful people like Josie. <laughs> it's amazing. So that's coming up soon. And yeah, I'd love you to come and explore. It's called. Yeah, what are the dates of, what are the dates and where can they go to join? Yes. So we'll put a link to join with this recording, with this podcast. And the next one that's coming up from this live recording is February the 20th, 2023. But there will be other ones if you're listening to this later on as well. So just visit the link and the, the next dates will be there. Perfect. Perfect. And yes, yeah, so I love to ask after we've had such a beautiful conversation about going deeper and embodying your wealth and truly feeling safe in your own body. Is there anything left on your heart to share with the mamas that are listening to this today? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I, I was actually telling my teenage daughters that I wish I could go back in time to talk to myself as a mother when my girls were little. And that one thing is this too shall change. So wherever you are, one thing we can count on is that this like, change will happen. Hold the vision of what you want. Hold the vision of what you want. Listen to that heart, right? It's like a seed of consciousness. We need to give that seed the right environment to grow. And I feel you and your pain and exhaustion and frustration and perceived limitation. And you're doing an amazing job. But start holding that, hold that vision and do your inner work and slowly chipping away one step at a time. I remember just, oh 
God, I just felt so trapped. I really did. And it wasn't that it was bad. Like I wasn't, you know, I had a good husband and like, it wasn't even, but I just felt so trapped. And, and I think what I didn't understand is that it would change eventually. But what I would say is now you have to start getting clear on what you want now, even though it's really painful to connect to what you want. Because I think the challenge is when you connect to your desire and you connect to what you want, then being with your present that is not that can feel immensely painful. We don't want to feel that. So it's best just not to want. It's best not to desire. It's best to just accept and just soldier on. And yes, acceptance is an important piece, but actually hold what you want, be with what isn't, go into acceptance as well. We have to call it, you know, soulful surrender, letting go as well, but to trust that you can start building your future, but you, you have to start now and you just chip away, you know, one day at a time. And this too shall change. I love that. This too shall change. Laura yeah. Waldman, it has been a pleasure to have you on the show with us. Thank you for sharing your heart. And thank you for these mic drops. <laughs> Nuggets today. That's what they were, mic drops. So thank you so much. <laughs> absolute delight you're absolutely beautiful thank you for having me it's been a pleasure talking with you all thank you for being part of the self-love movement your support and care matters here please be sure to subscribe review and share and get your ultimate daily planner freebie today by visiting makewifefunpodcast.com When you're ready to step deeper into my vibration and work together, go to backrosecoaching.com. Thank you again for listening. See you next time.